Hello friends, my name is Doug. Welcome to Third Star Garage. I think this is episode 15, the restoration of a 66 Volkswagen Beetle convertible named Hendrick. Today we are working on the passenger quarter panel. We are going to begin the process of trying to cut out the bad and put in the new. Stay tuned. <laughs> So we have our fender and our patch panel. This is the area of the quarter that we're trying to work on fixing. Uh, there was a, originally some work done in here by a previous owner. This repair was done by me earlier. Um, there is a patch down here by a previous owner that needs to be done better. Uh, there's some holes along the bottom here um, where this little angle piece was just spot welded in, or plug welded in. Doesn't look real great around the corner. And then uh, we wanna do better than this. So we have a patch panel for it. Um, we could cut it out as high as up here, but you know what we've learned, listened to, learned and been told is don't cut out more metal than you need to. So I think we're gonna start down here because this visible edge, bear with me, this visible edge looks nice and your eye will catch that as it matches the door. So we don't wanna mess with that if we don't have to. So I think we're gonna not cut out any more. In fact, we may start right at this corner down here and cut up this way or we may go across the top here, remove all of this, remove this from the bottom, and then put in the new patch. But we wanna mock up the fender again to make sure these holes line up and to see kinda how this fits. So we're digging through some boxes to find the fender bolts and we're gonna bolt the fender on and then see if that gives us any guidance. You know, what we're worried about is this curve. Can we get this curve to look right, match the rocker, match the fender? Um, so you can't tell that this was repaired. So we're gonna bolt the fender on next. Found it! Dale found it. You found, found it. bolts and fender welting. Nice work. We are getting closer to having a plan. As you can see, the fender is on. We have uh, this bolt right here is missing because it snapped off. But if that were there to pull in, this curve matches pretty well. Right here, we get a little bit of a larger gap, which kind of fits that when they welded this, I think they pounded it in a little bit. Um, or as the weld cooled, it sucked it in which gave them room to put a nice thick layer of Bondo. Um, so if we do, we're leaning towards doing a cut right here. Once we do that cut, we may need to pull this surface out just a touch. The other issue we have is the bottom fender bolt is currently not lined up. The hole is lower than the threaded insert. Um, our assumption is that the fender is correct and this patch that a previous owner put in might be too high. So we're gonna measure the distance from this bolt hole to this bolt hole, verify that against the part, the patch panel, and then also um, assuming that this one is correct, we're gonna use this as a measuring data point. We're gonna use this bottom surface here as measured off of the top. So between this corner and this bolt height, that will locate our patch panel up and down. Left to right will be determined by the curve of the fender and the corner here. And then in and out, we're gonna try to just match a gentle curve of the panel. Uh, that's our plan. It's just a plan. 
All right, so here's the plan. We're gonna start cutting low here, cut on this line across, and then we will level it out right here, kind of horizontally. We wanna stay below this welded nut. We're gonna cut down the edge here because this seems fairly solid, and this is a joint I think that we can blend together. Um, then, we think if we cut this loose down here, we might do a cut all the way across the bottom just to get this piece out. Otherwise, uh, we'll need to grind out these spot welds. Then we think we might need to pull this piece out just a touch. We'll have to play with that curve. See how that looks. If we need to recut it higher up top of this, we can. But after staring at it for about a half hour and scratching our heads, I think we are to the point where it's time to make sparks and uh, cut this puppy open. It's a nerve wracking moment. Wish us luck. There we go. Well, we got it apart. We thought we would clean it up in there, get rid of the rust and dirt. So it was mainly just a little bit of surface rust. Dale's cleaning it out with brake cleaner. We're going to dry it. And then uh, while we have this access, we're going to spray a little Rust-Oleum primer and just Rust-Oleum paint. And then we'll work on covering it up. We will also, from the top, Try to reach in before we're done with some like Eastwood internal frame coating so we can get the back side of this as well anywhere that it might need it because now's our chance to rust proof it. This is proving to be challenging. Uh, so there is a uh, what seems to be non original patch piece behind here which just tucks behind this spring plate cover. Um, we did kind of massage it a little bit to bend around and then put a tack weld here. Um, and then I think what we hope to do, you know, to a certain point, I, there's no way to get this to be perfectly original. So just to get it to look good, I think we will, um, probably pound this down and massage it in to get this surface as flush with this surface as we can and fill it with weld and smooth it. Um, and then here's the patch piece. Our gap along here 
we're feeling pretty good about. Um, our distance from, sorry. Hey Dale, you wanna help hold this? Uh, that's all right, I can edit this out. Maybe you just put a finger up there. Yeah, our gap here from here to here is pretty good and there to there, matching the other side. As long as it, you know, looks parallel over the running board, I think that'll be okay. What I think is critical is this arc here, that that matches well, and we're, we're feeling pretty good about that one. What we haven't done much investigating on yet is this curve, and we probably won't do that until we can mount the fender on. We have um, to trim this so that this piece butt welds to that piece, and right now they're both too long. And then we need to figure out the in and out of this piece, and, and we're getting there. The, the welded nuts in the back of here keep hitting the pieces that are behind it. So we need to get that in place yet too. Um, the other challenge we ran into is this surface, the, the black piece here was sitting quite proud from the quarter panel. So we ended up taking it and cutting a slit on the bottom. You can see I cut a slit all the way across. I'm not real impressed with how straight I cut it, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Because what we're going to do is put it on, get it where we need it, and then we'll tack weld it on the bottom, take it back off. Then I will weld that slit shut to give us the dimension that we need because it was sitting out like about that far. So I don't think they got this bend in the right spot. How long we got into... Mm. We got an hour or two into just of fitting, doing stuff of, yeah. of just grinding and grinding and fitting and um, to get it to this point. And we're, I don't know, we're two thirds, three quarters of the way there with the fitting. So we are out of time for today. Um, not sure when our next work day is, but we'll get back to it soon. We're getting closer to getting the quarter panel repair piece to fit. Um, it's another day, we're back at it on Saturday. Hope by the end of this day is to have this at least tack welded in. Dailies gets mad at me when I jinx myself and just set goals. Um, overall, we're looking pretty good from this corner up to here. And this is where we start running into troubles with aftermarket pieces. So if we match this radius here, which is visible on the exterior of the car, so that's a really critical one. This internal valley here did not line up with this groove here. So this flat here was narrower than this here. So what we ended up doing was bending this piece of it flat and then rebending this groove in a different spot so that i think we're closer um you know the fender bolts in here so really you're only going to see this if you stick your head inside the fender but we still want to get it as right as we can um this down here is lining up pretty well we needed to cut a gap here and then i massaged this back to make room for the welded on nuts there you can see them these welded on nuts to get this piece to sit flush so now this edge rests against this piece back there uh, and this fits fairly well here we can tap that corner down we do have a little hole here that i'm not sure what to do with we might need to fill that with some seam sealer but if I push down here, I've got a gap there. If I push up here, you can see I'm, what I'm getting at is I'm rocking right there. And uh, I don't know how well you can see this, but I've got a big lip sitting up here, a gap there. So kind of maybe an hour and a half into tweaking this, but I think what we need to do is to pull this surface out a little bit and then uh, re-angle this so that these will all be flush 
kind of butt welds. So we're getting there. This kind of work just takes patience and uh, don't rush it. But once you start welding it in, it's too late to change anything. Um, so I'm gonna go back to this and uh, we'll show you once again, once we're ready to tack weld it in. Someday. So we welded up the bottom of the patch and then blended it in. You can see the weld a little bit more on the back side, but that will be, I should probably paint that before we cover it up. Good point. Um, but that looks good. It's actually because it's on the bottom of the car hidden by the running board. So we're going to put um, plug welds in here. So Dale's going to drill those and then we will be ready to start tack welding this guy in. Patch is done and ready to go. Dale drilled our plug welds and then uh, took a flap disc to it to get the burrs off so that it sits nice and flush. Um, while we have this out, we are going to prime and paint the inside just with some Rust-Oleum primer and paint uh, just to get a coat on there before we put it in. But I um if i paint around these plug welds as it welds it will burn back the paint a fair amount so on the spot where we're going to plug weld here and here i'm going to use some 3m weld through primer shake it uh we'll wipe it clean with gonna grab the brake cleaner um just to clean it off get any grease that might be on it the weld through primer isn't necessarily the the most i don't know it's not like it's super protective but it is better than nothing and if we just put nothing on there any water or moisture that seeps into it will um you know cause it to rust hopefully it will be all seam sealed and no moisture is going to get back there Dale has promised he will never take it out if there's any chance of rain whatsoever, which I fully do, know that not to be true. But what were you going to say? Uh, you do have it coming through that quarter window. It's not going to seal perfect. So it's going to come yeah. less from the outside and more from the inside, washing the car even. And it's got, the, it's got a drain hole here, but I don't know how well that drain hole actually is going to work. Yeah. So, so we're just going to lightly hit... Put a couple coats of the weld through primer and then uh, we're going to prime and paint the rest of it. We may, when we, before we're all done and it goes to the paint shop, uh, get some like, um, do we have the internal frame coating from Eastwood? Um, and just while we have it all down in there, just spray another coat or two on it to seal things up. Um, sure. Dale votes yes. Dale votes yes. He wants to do that. But we got to buy it. Dale's got to buy it, he says. <laughs> um, all of this will be sealed way better than it probably was at the factory, at least the way Ford did it. I don't know about how Volkswagen did it. All right, we'll let that dry up. We'll add a few coats of paint to it and uh, call it good. All right, I think we are to the moment of truth. Uh, the paint's dry. We've kind of, our theory is that this line is the most critical line of all of it. So, and this surface is the most critical surface. So we've got this eyeballed. So we like this curve. This surface here is nice and flush. So we're going to put a tack weld here first. Then this I bent out just slightly. So then I can, once this is tack welded in, I can flex this back until this surface here is flush, kind of like that. And then we'll tack weld this in. Then we'll proceed down this gap here to the end tack welding it as we go. The key will be to keep it flush, tack it, cool it down, make sure it's completely cool before we go on to the next one, jump around so we don't add any extra heat to the panel that we don't need. So, 
All right, here we go. For me, it is a week or so later, and I am back to finish this weld. So the bottom is all done, and uh, time to stitch weld this together, doing my best to not have any gaps in it, as well as to keep it cool and not overheating. So let's get to it. So I have one spot on this joint that I don't feel good about right here. This is nice and smooth. That's nice and smooth. All of these feel nice and flush. Right here, my finger catches on this ledge. This lower surface is prouder than this surface on the top. So I'm gonna regrind this weld off here. Let me see if I can show you. Regrind this off here and then see if I can pull this upper surface out a little bit. Otherwise, I'm afraid when I grind this smooth, I'm going to have to grind through too much of this lower surface. So I'm going to grind this one back open. That actually feels better already. problem this arc was as close to perfect as we could get it now when I put this straight edge on there you can see a gap huge gap between the straight edge so I Felt like I was being very careful to not let the weld get too hot. It seems like as it cools, it's sucking that edge down in. I don't know what to do about that. Okay, friends, um, 
I think we're gonna pause this for a little while and I've got some research and some learning to do. Um, I feel good about these welds around the outside. I am not happy at all about these welds in the middle. Um, in my mind, that's gonna require a whole bunch of Bondo to fix and that's, that's not as good as we're going for. So as Dale often says, if you rush try to rush a miracle, you get bad miracles. So um, if you've learned how to weld gaps like this in the middle, I think as it cool, it's sucking the sheet metal down in. Feel free to post a comment below. Realistically, by the time I get this edited, I probably will have done a bunch of Facebook and YouTube research and I'll tell you what we learned in the next episode. Right now, my gut feel is I wanna carefully grind all of this smooth and then take a thin cutting wheel and cut at least this middle part open. Um, and then hopefully it will relax back out to the curve that we want. And then I will do uh, an improved way of welding. Uh, I don't know what that is yet. Um, that's gonna give me a lot larger of a gap to weld shut, but I would rather wrestle with a larger gap than deal with having to have a quarter inch of Bondo in here. It's absolutely what we don't want. Uh, and I'm afraid as I try to grind that smooth, I'll, I'll make it too thin. Um, so, Here's what it is, live and learn. Um, stay tuned for the next episode and uh, by hook or by crook, we'll get this done right. Just takes a uh, willingness to try and persevere. Call your grandma, tell her you love her. Have a great day. Thanks for being part of Third Style Garage.